So this is my third lecture, third mini course. And so remember, we are still with this algebraization program. And the aim of this program, so let me formulate this perhaps more clearly than last time. So this is the aim is to construct algebraic presentation of um, certain three and four dimensional cobordism categories and then to use them to start to construct perhaps a linear presentation even of these categories and to uh, study, for example, TQFT on them and, and their cobordism themselves. Okay, and so uh, the main results which I'm presenting here, it's uh, the, the one theorem due to uh, me, Evelina Bobcheva, Marco Derenci, and uh, Ricardo Piergalini is that certain category of three-dimensional cobordism, which I called last time three cop. So just to recall you, these are connected, compact-oriented three-dimensional cobordism with connected one punctured bond boundary. So this is this is a category. And this is actually so the result is this is a braided monoidal category really generated by just one object, which I call Habiro <clears throat> Hopf algebra object, uh, which is actually in this case, uh, we call it F1, this object, this is just a disk with one handle attached. So this object, with a monoidal structure here given by just putting, uh, so gluing uh, by side this, these pictures. So according to this monoidal structure, uh, this three cop is just braided monoidal category. So basically we know complete presentation of this category by uh, just one generator, uh, sorry, one object, bunch of morphisms, and some relation on these morphisms. So this, this is just every, every morphism is a composition of those. And uh, as we said that actually this result will be just a, a, a corollary more or less from uh, the main theorem I would like to, to discuss today, uh, which uh, tells you that some certain category uh, which I called 4HB. This is some topological category of um, four-dimensional two-handle bodies. This category, again, is a braided monoidal category, really generated exactly as in the previous case, but, and now uh, the objects here, we will call it Bobchiva, Piergalini, Hop Algebra, so the, I'll, uh, I'll uh, abbreviate this by BPH algebra and uh, Habirohop algebra, I'll abbreviate by HH. And this object in this case, this is just solid torus of genus, oh, sorry, um, uh, genus one handled body. So it's, uh, yeah, it's so, solid torus. So it's just, you take a three-dimensional ball, attach one handle, and this is uh, the guy. And uh, this results, uh, so I will refer to this, to this result uh, basically by saying that 4HB is equivalent to 4ALK, where 4ALK is this category, algebraic category generated by this one object. And the previous result, I will uh, refer to this as three co is equal to the three out. Okay, so these are basically the two main results which we should be here. So at the end of the day, we will know how to prove them or at least so what the strategy is. Okay, so then uh, I started uh, yesterday to discuss uh, four-dimensional two-handed bodies. And remember, that every such four-dimensional two-handled body can be obtained from some three-dimensional space, which is I call the minus of x 
times in the interval. So you just seeken, seekening this space. You call this x zero, and uh, the, this handle body it's a filtration of uh, so it comes equipped with a filtration where you start with x zero and you obtain x1 by attaching to x0 some bunch of uh, four-dimensional one handles. Yeah, and remember this uh, four-dimensional one handle, this is just uh, d1 times d4 minus one, which is d3. Yeah, and you attach this. So basically, if you look at the boundary of this guy, it splits into two parts. The boundary of d1, which is s0 times d3, and the boundary of the second guy, which is uh, d1 times s2. Okay, and uh, basically what you're doing, so so you you can always so if you if you ignore this manifold and you think about this just as a four ball, this will be most of the case in our construction. So if this is just a four ball, that the boundary of this four ball is a three sphere. You take out of the three sphere two copies of a three ball. And you connect them by uh, so so basically uh, you you from from a three you take two balls out, but instead you get a piece of the boundary which will be this d one times this two, yeah. So this is this is how how the attaching goes, and um, and then the next step is you constructing so the, so and we will stop here because we will only consider two handled body. So we will only attach one and two handles and never never handles of high index as this as two. And this x2 is obtained from x1 by attaching a bunch of four-dimensional two handles. And this is by our definition, it was d2 times d2. And again, the, the boundary of this guy splits in the two parts. The first one is um, S1 times D2, and the other one is D2 times S1. And what you immediately recognize, if you know a little bit about three-dimensional topology, that uh, attaching of such a two handles, what it does, so assume that, uh, for example, we don't have one handles, so we didn't attach any two, uh, any one handles, then we are still with this four ball here, whose boundary is S3. And what we are doing on this S3, be removing a solid torus and gluing another solid torus differently instead. And this is exactly this contraction which is which is known on the boundaries. This is surgery. So basically, so these two handles, what they do on the three sphere, they do surgery. So these are the surgery components. And this one handles, this actually, so what we uh, what we agreed last time that actually that the picture how we will represent such a thing is we take this uh, four ball. So clearly, I cannot draw four dimensional. So this is all one dimension lower. So I take a four ball, I attach a few one handles somewhere, and then uh, this is my x one, and then uh, I need to specify the attaching maps. Which are just thickening of S1. So I just I, I just I just do need to specify where do I attach my two handles. And I can use perhaps the other color to uh, show that, for example, so actually, so to specify two handles, I just need to draw here the attaching map. And this attaching map can, for example, go there, and here it could be any node. So if I just so every component. So every every two handles looks like this. So it may go through a few one handles, and then it can be noted somewhere in this three sphere. Yeah, clearly I can represent this by diagram. And now, so the trick is only, uh, so we know that we can work with this with this handle, uh, just as we are usually working with non diagrams in a three. Yeah, and the only question is how do we represent this one handles here? And the uh, great idea, I think it was due to Akpolut, it's to represent this by, by, by this dotted meridians. So this is, this is how, yeah, so, so actually I will now draw everything just on the, so uh, uh, using some projection from R3. So I will just use my blackboard as usual to, to 
to draw the diagrams. This will be this so-called Kirby diagram. And uh, and what is uh, what is uh, the advantage of representing? So basically, I just need the information. So how many of these two handles go through 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 the given one handle? And this is completely so. This information is uh, completely uh, catched by this meridian because this meridian encircling everything which goes through one handle. Yeah, but there is another advantage of this of this meridian because. Uh, so if uh, I forget the dot here, then uh, if I'm just interested only on the what 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 happens on the boundary, and I just do surgery on this on this circle, then I uh, I get exactly the boundary, uh, uh, which uh, of the of the of the of the of the, of the corresponding handle body. So this means that uh, so in some sense uh, this is. Uh, uh, to to understand so to, to to show the difference between 4 4 4 d and 3d topology it's important to distinguish between dotted and undotted components but if you're only interested in the boundary you can just forget dots and this produces you a boundary by using surgery yeah so therefore it's it's a useful notation this is how how most of the uh, of the four dimensional handle bodies are represented is by using so called so the kirby diagram in this case would be will look like uh, so this is this is my line it goes somewhere here it's uh, built my node and here I have these two meridians dotted meridians so so this is this is a Kirby diagram of um, of the handle body which I just described so just for, for this example okay so um, <clears throat> let us perhaps consider another example which is um, CP2 so this manifold is obtained from uh, a four ball by uh, just, uh, so basically it has one zero handle, one two handles and one four handles. So only each, so in each even dimension, one handle. And <clears throat> to present this, this is a closed four dimensional manifold. And uh, the two handles, there is no one handle. So there is just two handles. So the Kirby diagram would be just that one. And, uh, <clears throat> And usually the people, so so if you look <coughs> what happens to the boundary, then this is just surgery on uh, on this one component. So this basically this uh, this means that the, the, um, uh, <coughs> so if your surgery is three on on this uh, on this uh, note, that perhaps you know what we will get. As somebody knows, so, so somebody worked at some point with surgeries. So basically, you remove a solid torus. About solid torus, you can think about uh, just a uh, uh, cylinder like this uh, with upper boundary uh, identified with the lower boundary. Yeah, and now you, you glue another, another solid torus where the meridian of the, uh, so like bounding a disk, the meridian of the other solid torus is glued to to this curve so so for example what 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 happens if you if you glue solid torus so one to the other uh, or perhaps perhaps in this case it's better to draw another way okay so if you if you take this guy out of the three so my manifold is outside so the, the meridian here it's uh, not bounding, and I'm gluing I'm gluing this meridian here to to this meridian here. Then what what I will get back? Would you get back S three? Exactly, I will get S three because I just remove it and put it back exactly in the same way. Yeah, and here here is the difference that uh, so I'm not gluing exactly there, but I'm gluing to such a curve. Yeah. But this, this loop is contractible in the complement. So, I mean, it's bounded disk. So this guy is bounded disk. So I can contract it and this will be just the meridian and this will reduce to the previous situation. So the surgery and this guy provide a three back. Yeah, so this is, this, is, uh, this is a usual Kirby move. So perhaps if you have seen Kirby move at some point, uh, you know, this, this is stabilization. So removing uh, such component doesn't change the, the, the surgery representation for three manifolds. But uh, 
uh, but here, so so what what I'm trying to tell you is that uh, <clears throat> after you you do uh, this four dimensional attaching of a two handle, uh, the boundary will not change, so it will be the same as three. And then uh, to produce a closed manifold, which is this manifold, you need to attach just uh, to, to glue another another disc, so uh, four handle, to uh, to produce something without boundary with this. And this we will never do. So in my so so so, so for example, people in textbooks when when you see these diagrams, the people just saying this is a Kirby diagram for CP two. And what they uh, mean by this usually is that uh, after you after you glued these two handles, there is a unique way how to glue usually three and four handles to produce a closed manifold. So this is this is how usually work with this diagram. But uh, in my case, I will just only uh, so I will stop with two handles. I will never so I will never use three and high dimensional handles. Okay. Is is what you're saying actually that you would not that CP2 is not a two handle. Exactly. CP2 is not a handle body, but if you remove it, actually, so if you remove D3, then this is uh, D4. So, so, so actually, for me, this diagram represents this guy. Yeah. So, this is what I'm saying. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Um, then, um, then let me also recall you uh, what I stated already last time. So I think the procedure here is to start with this one. Yeah. Okay, so I uh, uh, so I assume we have two two dimensional handle bodies or the two handle decomposition, say x2 and x2 prime are actually represent the same manifold or diffeomorphic manifold. If you can relate them by isotopies of Attaching maps, handle slides, uh, basically I handle over I handle, so of the same, and uh, stabilization move, which is uh, creation and uh, removal of a canceling pair, pair of say I. I plus one handles. And so how uh, this moves, so we would like to represent these moves because we have to work modulo these moves. So I would like to present them. So, so how it looks like. So on the Kirby diagram, it looks as follows. So if I have attaching map of a two handles, so this means it can be linked and knotted and whatever else happens to this component. And I have another component here, which can be linked with other component and knotted. Then, um, then this uh, two handle slide looks as uh, you take the first component and you open it, you go around the second one and you go back and then you do whatever you have done before. So this is, this is just a usual sliding of one handle along the other handle. This is uh, one move. And the other move, uh, it's a cancellation of a, one two handle pairs. This is what we looked last time. <clears throat> so this looks like this. So this is a, a one two handle, and this is sometimes it's called stabilization move. And you just remove them. So if you each time if you have two handle which may be knotted and linked with something with something else, but you have just uh, just this single meridian sitting on this. So so nothing here, nothing else can go in just this component in this meridian, just sitting somewhere as a small meridian sitting on this component. Then I can remove this component and this meridian, and this is the same four-dimensional two-handed body. So the other sample should also be just the right here on the left side. This one? Yeah, so even if we have something non-trivial on the other yeah, circle? Exactly. Even if we have something non-trivial here, it will be exactly. So it's just important that there is a meridian on, on this, just just encircling only this one guy. And then I can remove it. Yeah. It's it's exactly correspond like a gluing a disk into 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 the non-trivial component created by the one handle. 
Okay, and then uh, a priori, you need also to consider, you see, so here handle slides, you also, so it can be done for every I handle over every I handle. So a priori, you need to consider handle slides of one handles over one handles. But this I don't need to because I can realize them just by these two moves. Yeah, so let me uh, let me uh, just here. So I go right now in white because I think it's easier to remove afterwards. So say for example, I have uh, I have this situation. I have one one handles and I have another one handle with a different number of strands going into this one. So if I have these two. Then what I can do, I can uh, do this stabilization move and introduce uh, a circle. So by stabilization, I will introduce. So let me uh, let me draw it perhaps. So I I can introduce such a canceling pair. Okay. So this doesn't change my diagram. You you agree? Yeah. Because the, so whatever whatever this component does, it just goes into this one dotted dotted meridian. So by this move, I can I can remove it. So I didn't change anything. Okay, but now I can uh, I can make two handle slides, and I can uh, I can slide every every this guy by two handle slide. I can slide it like this. And if you think a little bit about this picture, so after after you slide all this guy around, what you will get is uh, this picture, and then you will. Uh, you will get you will get this picture and that it and this is exactly uh, what happens here so if i if i slide this one handle over this one handle then i will have uh in in the first one all the component will be sitting and this is the second one which was here in any case okay so this this can be just realized as a composition so sliding of one handles over one handles can be realized by the composition of this map to two moves. So therefore, the only two moves I'm I'm uh, I'm considering is just these two. So if you have question about this, then ask me later. And now, uh, so what I do not consider here is uh, so I don't have any three handles. So I do not slide any three handles over three handle. I also do not slide four handles over four handles. So I'm not doing all this. So therefore, I cannot. So this is a diffeomorphism between two handle bodies would need all all these things. So it, it will also need creation removal of a two three handle pair. Yeah. So therefore, but I'm considering only these two moves. So therefore, I will consider my two dimensional handle bodies up to so called two deformations. So basically, uh, creation and removal of two, three handles. Uh, so the equivalence relation generated only by these two moves is a priori weaker than the equivalence relation generated by diff uh, diffeomorphism. So, so therefore, so the equivalence relation generated by only these two, two moves will be called two deformation. So which I will call two deformation. So this may differ all set of diffeomorphisms. So, so basically these two deformations are considered as, uh, and actually this is a uh, open problem, which people expect that this is really not, so this is, uh, um, um, so re really small, small subset. So it's not equal to the to the whole set of diffeomorphism, but there is no evidence for this. So I mean, there is no count example. So so this is, and this is mainly because we do not have any invariants up to two deformations. So until now, basically all invariances are invariants under diffeomorphisms. And now I'm I'm introducing. So I will introduce invariants up to a weaker set. And this may so this invariance uh, so uh, may be used to detect this difference between between two deformation and diffeomorphism. Diffeomorphism can consider smooth structure as well, right? but there's two deformations in like just a topological process. No, 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 no. I mean, I'm attaching handles, so so handle decomposition. It's it's like PL. It's also smooth, so you can smooth everything. So it's it's a smooth construction. It's not topological. 
So, so uh, like attaching, you attach a handle, you can think about uh, about uh, this diffeomorphism. Yep. So it's uh, yeah. Okay. And now, so I'm in the position finally to define the category I'm interested in. This is four HB. So this is a category whose objects are three-dimensional one handle bodies so you can identify the set of one three-dimensional one handle bodies because this is just uh, they distinguish judged by genus you have genus one which is solid torus genus two it's a, uh, other things so basically you can identify the set just with natural number by looking at the how many one handles you attach and uh, morphisms are are connected oriented compact but it's always compact four dimensional two handle bodies up to two deformation so it's two deformation classes of these guys so how it looks like so so here is a picture so this is for example one by uh, so this is this is its cube so this is a. So this is this is just a three-dimensional one-handed body, yeah. So so for solid torus. So this is just a solid torus, but I'm just drawing this by taking first a cube, and then attaching this one handle to this cube, yeah. And I would like to to look at the morphism from this guy to say guy with uh, two handles. So this will be a morphism from from. Uh, this will be morphism from one to two into my in my category. So, so the other guy will look like this. And again, I'll have this. So I would like to construct morphism from one to two. So now I need to, so basically I multiply. So I'm uh, <clears throat> I'm thickening all the structure by, by, by taking product of this guy with an interval. So basically this is can be, so by, by constructing such a, such a cube here, so it was not not very, but, but you can think that. Uh, so I'm just thickening the picture by constructing so cube. So so now you have just a, a cube with uh, just one handle floating here and two one handles down, and now I'm attaching to this guy a two handle along along. So for example, such such a diagram. So I'm going there. So perhaps this should be, a, uh, and then I'm I'm going down. So for example, here. So this is all happens on the front boundary of this. Then I'm uncircling this one handle. Then for example, I'm going here like this and like this. Okay, so this will be a four-dimensional two-handled body. Consider the morphism from from this upper handle body to this down three-dimensional one so this is a three-dimensional one handle body this is a three-dimensional one handle body in between them so i'm basically taking them times an interval and drawing the attaching curve for the for the two handle okay so so it's difficult to to to, to draw this picture so you can look at my papers there are better pictures there because marco drew it and not me so but uh, uh but let me let me let me do it how or so how how you can how you can uh, how you can uh, draw the, the the diagram? So the, the Kirby diagram for this for this guy would be like this, and then I will have here. Uh, I will have here this guy going like this, and then I will have here also one guy going like this. And then I will go here into this handle, like going out and so. So this is uh, this is so called Kirby tangle. So this is so called Kirby tangle, representing my morphism from so this one two morphism. So it goes, you see. So this there is one dotted circle. It's representing one handles one handle here. There is a. Uh, one dotted circle will represent this handle, and this one dotted circle represents this handle. And each time, if your if your curve goes through the handle, it's it's 
enter its end as this meridian and goes and otherwise it just adjusts these curves. The only difference is for each of this handle, I am attaching this meridian with a dot and uh, and, and this uh, these things going out. That's that's all. Just in order that I can compose them. So the composition will be given just by gluing. So the next one is we start with this. I'm just putting it on top, and uh, each handle which upstairs come, it will it will also come here, and it will come into this circle at the end. So this is a composition. It's just by gluing, usual composition in the in the category, and monoidal structure again by gluing from side, just stacking. So gluing, gluing from side from this side. So th this is uh, this is this four-dimensional cobordism category. I would like to speak about. So clearly, it has, for example, identity morphism for each. So, for example, for solid torus, the identity identity tangle, Kirby tangle looks like this. So I'm. So this is a dotted component. So this is this is just the identity. And you can you can see that, for example, if you if you slide this guy, if you open here, if you slide this like this along along the other one, and then you can remove the other pair so this is the same as just identity you can also check that if you glue two identities together so glue gluing here it would be would mean so if i take this one guy and i close it with another such guy which is comes here and here i have the dotted component and this again like this then this is again so again you think about sliding and you will see that the composition of two identities is still the same identities as this is an exercise. So, so you have an identity for every object. It looks like this. Then, um, so can I ask a yeah, stupid absolutely. question? Uh, absolutely. Uh, so, I suppose the when you say the morphism, it's, it's supposed to be so a uh, four-dimensional shoe and the body. That so, do we put that the the border is the shoe original object, or is there a more technical condition like it was for Frico boarding? So the the morphism needs the two handle body needs to be connected related to the two objects. It is a morphism between, right? Yeah. So we, you, you need some sort of extra condition. It's not so. It's uh, it's the condition just that the border of it is the two things, or is it slightly different, like it was for free cobordism? If I remember uh, so, correctly. Uh, so, so sorry, 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 sorry. I I uh, I think I don't understand. You mean uh, you mean uh, clearly, sir? So I mean because I'm drawing the picture in this very very specific way. This means that uh, boundary is actually parameterized. So it's exactly the same. So it's parameterized. So there is a standard uh, uh, three-dimensional one-handed body, and uh, supply. So the boundary of four-dimensional two-handed body is provided with a map to the standard one. And uh, I consider this up to two deformation, which uh, so it's exactly the same. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. And uh, perhaps uh, so. Just here for the people uh, who knows. Uh, uh, so how it would look uh, would look like in. Uh, uh, so how the border? So so if if I just take the boundary of this cobordism. How the boundary would look like, yeah, and the boundary would like uh, would look like so. So in in the pictures we had before, so if you if you just so so actually there is a boundary factor from this cobordism to three cop, yeah, and just in this case, so how it looks like, so it will be, so it's it just so this time I'm I'm just obliged to to reverse all my cobordism, so so now it's not anymore bottom, but it's it's so so now I I, I so the latest today I have to do this. And so you you keep this uh, down. So you 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 consider these two guys downstairs as uh, as these two handles, and you consider this guy as uh, as this tube. So so now it will go like this. 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 It will go like this and like this. So this is this is a corresponding picture in the three cop which we had before. Okay, and, and just now, so because I still I would like so because I consider this as a morphism from. Now I consider this as from two to one, because I reverse the different the, the, the direction. So now I'm going from bottom to top. So I have to reverse the picture. So so it's basically the same picture we had before, just turned up. 
upside down. Okay, so that's all. So, so for the people who fall completely asleep during all this uh, uh, stuff, topological. So now I'm going back to algebra. I have a quick question. Yeah. So um, I feel like I'm probably missing something, but the thing you said that the one on the right, you're saying it's from two to one over there, right? But there's no there's no kind of handle body at the top. This Right, little handles here. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, so what I try to to argue here is that uh, this addition of this of this guy addition upstairs. So I can remove all of them actually. So I can remove this guy. It's, it doesn't contain any information. Just for it's uh, it just uh, uh, sometimes easier because you see. So I'm considering this Kirby diagram up to these moves. Mm -hmm. So what I can do here, I can slide this guy like this. Yeah, and then this circle will go only only on this component, and then I can remove this too, and then it will be just 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 open ends. Okay. Yeah. So so it's 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 what I explained here is that actually so the identities you can you can you can insist to put them on the ends of things you can not insist you just can open. Yeah, but yeah. I see. Thank you. Okay. Okay, and now, uh, so we are, we are back to algebra, and I hope this will, so yes, but it, it was really not bad, and perhaps it will be today, you know, yes, and so now, uh, let me introduce something which I called for ALC already in the, uh, in the beginning, so, so this is the next definition at a uh, CB monoidal category with tensor unit uh, and uh, be even braided monoidal. Uh, then a braided Hopf algebra object H in C is called a Bobchivar Pergalini Hopf algebra if it comes equipped with a map, small lambda from H to one, which I'll call integral, and I'll denote it, uh, okay, so integral, a co-integral, which should be big lambda from one to H. So I call it co-integral. Um, then there's a twist or even morphism, uh, which is, uh, will be theta plus minus, which go from H to H. And I will have uh, the following notation for this morphism. So the integral it will be, so now I will put some arrows. So this is integral quick. And uh, here I'll just put some number plus or minus one along this. So this is just in the morphism and it will be denoted by this plus or minus one. And I can also introduce, so if you wish, I can introduce co-pairing. And this is just defined as a co-multiplication of, uh, of a ribbon element, just corrected by uh, minus one, minus one here, and by uh, antipode here. So this, this, uh, this guy will be denoted. You see, this, this is not an additional morphism because I completely express it through the existing morphism in the category already. So therefore, it's, uh, this is just a co-pairing. And now, uh, all this will be subject to the following relation. So, so the first uh, set of relations are integral axioms. So, and this is just the usual property of the integral. So if you, if you have a co-multiplication, you put integral on one side, then this is integral of the original element times the unit. If you do it with a co-integral, then you have a, uh, this property, then if you evaluate integral and the co-integral, this is just a empty diagram. So it's a tensor unit. So if you, uh, your integral is uh, S invariant and the co-integral is also S invariant, okay? Then you have um, a ribbon axioms. And this ribbon is just, if you ribbon, so if you have here M ribbon twist and this N ribbon twist, and this is the same as N plus M ribbon twist. So a ribbon twist is insensible to the antipode. 
uh, oh, sorry, it's commute with the antipode. Um, then you, if you apply epsilon on the twist, then this is the same as epsilon. And if you, so, and this is central element, uh, the twist is a central element, so you can push it up from the multiplication. Then you have the hop pairing. Um, <clears throat> Pairing and co-pairing properties. Uh, so the co-pairing, which I defined as a hop co-pairing in the sense that it's, uh, it has this property. Okay. So these are all axioms. So they were known uh, long before. So I mean, there's a usual integral axioms. It's a usual ribbon element, like in any ribbon category. And now there are two new, which I'll call uh, BP axioms, this guy, so at least I have never seen before, before I discover their paper. And this looks like this. So basically it's tell us how you can move um, ribbon through the co-multiplication. Yeah, so usually uh, uh, delta of a ribbon element is just basically sum of uh, all PBV bases. And so what you're doing here, it's, uh, so it's give you an R matrix. It gives you here guy. So here you have minus one. Here you have minus one. It's a co-pairing. And this, so this is the first new axiom. So it, uh, basically, what 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 it does? It moves it moves minus one through the co-pairing. Uh, so it's uh, through the co-multiplication. Sorry. Through the commutation. So you see, I have minus one here, and I move it. I have minus one on both sides, but the price is uh, the price is big. Yeah, the price is here is a twist, and here is a hop pairing. And uh, and there is another one. Uh, so which goes like this. So it expresses uh, the right braiding, the positive braiding through the negative braiding. So I can. Uh, I can express this through, through the negative braiding, but a lot of more structures. So here I will have my, so here I'll need the plus, so an antipode here, we'll need the antipode. Here I will put this one, here I'll put this one. So I think uh, that it, no. So so th these are, th that, that it. So basically, so you, you, you have everything what you already, know from every hop algebra or ribbon hop algebra and you have these two additional guys and yeah so yeah on this side on, on that side and you can move it up so basically uh, this would be uh, some x times ribbon times something else and you can uh, basically you can commute um, so multiplication so it's it's just centrality if you yeah okay Okay, so let uh, give me uh, so let give you a few comments about um, about this definition. So first of all, let me uh, tell you that uh, this is indeed a ribbon Hopf algebra, uh, Bokshio-Pergolini Hopf algebra is ribbon with um, basically the self-dual object and with the evaluation given by this guy. It's okay, I'm, I'm drawing now in white just because it's easier to do co-evaluation. So basically uh, you, you can use uh, integral co-integral to define evaluation co-evaluation in, uh, in this category. So I can give you also formulas if you wish. So this is uh, multiplication of identity times S. And this is uh, delta light to the co-integral. And uh, this thing, they satisfy this zigzag relation. So uh, if you take the zigzag, it's the same as that one, okay? So so it's really non-degenerate, yeah. Uh, can I clarify the definition? So here at delta plus minus the both ribbon elements? Uh, it's, uh, I mean, uh, uh, they are inverse to each other. So because I'm, so I'm not writing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so I mean, they, uh, it's invertible. It's, uh, so it's just invertible ribbon morphism with, uh -huh. with the properties at plus times minus. So, so you see, this is a plus. So if I plus plus one minus one, it will be zero. Uh -huh. 
Okay, so theta, theta plus and theta minus are just inverses of each other. Exactly, exactly. And one is a Riemann element, and another is the inverse. Is the inverse, yeah, exactly. So it's usual. So no surprises, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So no surprises until until these two guys. So they are called uh, R eight and R nine. So whatever. Okay. Um, okay. So 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 we have even structure. Uh, so we have even uh, so actually we can define. Uh, the guys. Um, uh, so, with respect to this uh, to this duality given by this evaluation co-evaluation, uh, actually the dual of uh, co-multiplication would be uh, would be uh, this guy. It's not a multiplication. It's it's this guy. Okay, and actually, uh, so um, this defines so uh, this defines. Uh, Frobenius algebra structure. So this is Frobenius um, with, uh, with product mu. So if I'll call this mu for product delta unit lambda and co unit epsilon. So basically, so this exact tells you. That uh, the, the, this Frobenius structure is non degenerate. So there is a non degenerate Frobenius form. This, this provides you a Frobenius form. Yeah. But so the main difference of this base type, uh, you do not have, you do not have this. So, so the whole pairing, so this is, this is important. So it's, it's not, so this, this was a property in the Habiro algebra. This was important that, uh, so that, uh, uh, this is uh, this modularity, non degeneracy condition in three dimensional topology, which is important for the QFT, blah, blah, blah. But uh, so to construct invariance of four dimensional manifold, it's actually uh, so you, you, you don't want it. So did this thing like two, 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 two lines that, that stands like for double braiding, right? It involves double braiding. Uh, so it's uh, for me, so, so I'm, I'm just distinguishing this kind of duality given by Hope Bank with this kind of duality given by the integral. And so, so this is just, but, but okay, you can interpret this as, uh, as a double brain. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But uh, this is this is a hope pairing and this is uh, this kind of pairing. Okay, and one is Frobenius and the other and the other is hope, yeah. Okay, and then, uh, and then I don't want to take, to say anything else. So basically, so uh, the, the last lecture will be to define a functor from this 4HB into 4ALK, which is, uh, yeah, exactly. Let me, let me just define that 4ALK, 4ALK be a braided monoidal category, category freely generated by BP, BPH algebra, okay? And so, what I will uh, do really immediately after after uh, at the beginning of the next lecture is to construct functor from from this four alk into four hb, just by saying where. So basically, so I mean, you probably already know that this algebra will be sent to d two times is one, and this is actually already defines a functor because uh, so I mean, I, this is the only object there. This is the only object there. And I just need to tell you where do I send all these morphisms. Yeah, and uh, also those morphisms for the for the braided hop algebra. So co-multiplication, multiplication, antiport, unit, co-unit, uh, integral, co-integral, and even morphism. So after I define this and then just checking relation. So so this way is easier. So I, 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 it's uh, basically you can you, you can construct it already if you were careful listening for me how 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 the functor from three alk to three cop is constructed. Then this is just putting putting this fancy one handles and so and this is basically is determined already by almost everything except for for this guy is already determined by what we know from from the previous lectures. But what the main part, which we will consider in the, in the last lecture, is how to construct the inverse. And I'll provide you the explicit inverse. And this is much more complicated. Thank you. Thank you is there any question? So 
For the adjective like ribbon, there is a reason that the category of H modules then becomes a ribbon category. Is there an interpretation of these additional axioms as having some additional condition on the category of H modules? Uh, not, so you just need to assume that uh, your H is unimodular and finite, and then you're done. And then I, I will I will I will explain you also in the second in the next lecture that uh, every unimodular finite dimensional ribbon hopf algebra is a presentation of of this BPH algebra. Oh, so it satisfies these two axioms. Exactly, it satisfies these two axioms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so it's uh, they're satisfied. They're just isotopies. So I mean, yeah, they're satisfied. Yeah. The question, but. Um, but uh, but the the whole structure will be different. So so for example, you know clearly that for uh, quantum groups, for example, integral. So you have a left integral, right integral. So the, your integral is not s invariant. So you don't have these properties a priori. It's not two sided integrals. Yeah, you don't have this property. But I will modify the definition of integral co integral from the usual one. So it's and uh, you will have all this. So it's uh, it's a called transmutation. So Majid calls this construction transmutation. We have one question. Do you think there is a further algebra uh, where you consider two handle bodies, but uh, with cobordism up to uh, DFO rather than two equivalents? So at least uh, I'm pretty sure it will not be managed by this algebra. So I would say so I would say rather uh, rather than doing something like this, it's to try to construct close four manifold by gluing together two such two handled bodies and interpret the second handle body as like like you, you see that by Poincare duality is a union of three and four handles. It's again a four-dimensional two-handled body. And then you can glue them together, and uh, this should produce something, something close. So, so I would I would rather go for it than as a question. So uh, about the two deformations, so the open question that you mentioned, was that to find two diffeomorphic four manifolds which are not related by two deformation? Is that the open question? Uh, not the, the open question because uh, because uh, uh, like, if, if they are related by two deformations, they are by definition diffeomorphic. Right. Yeah, yeah it's the converse. So, so given two, uh, uh, given uh, two, uh, 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 manifold which are two, two, two defaults, so two equivalent. I'm calling this two equivalent. Mm -hmm. So given two, two equivalent, mm -hmm. which are not diffeomorphic. And this is a very subtle relation. So for example, I don't know if how, how much about four dimensional topology you know, but, but there is a bunch of count examples which were uh, so to produce some uh, exotic spheres. Yeah. So by Agbulu, no, by, by Swanson and something. There's a paper, many, many examples. Yeah. And then there is uh, each year it was appearing the paper of Agbulu. Who just uh, produced this uh, two three handle cancellation pair slides these two handles in very very wild way so, so it's many many pictures and at the end he shows how oh, no, no they they actually diffeomorphic you see so so it's uh, but but all this example is a potential example of of those who can be not too diffeomorphic because the only way to relate them is through this additional two three handle pair which we don't do not have so and this invariance it would be a way to say ah wow guys look so this is not the same as a diffeomorphism and there is another very important question so-called Andrew Curtis uh, conjecture which I'll mention later which is also can be can be answered by by this kind of invariance okay, okay. thank you again.